You know I'm right. The podcast that uncovers the origin stories of some of the biggest names in entertainment, media, sports, and so much more. Nick Durst along with Joe Calvries. And Joe, our guest today, you met her a few weeks ago back in person, thanks to one of our other guests. So you could explain that in your introduction. But always great to have a fellow Staten Islander with us. And yet again, another guest from the Big Brother Verse. It's amazing, isn't it? What a small world we were just talking about before the show started. I don't think I've ever seen anybody who's reacted to your intro quite like she just did. For anybody who's watching on video, her face lit up and um, she was amazing in person. Now, electric in person. Uh, we're going to have a great time talking with her. Yes, she is a former Big Brother house guest as we are Big Brother super fans here. We welcome Gina Marie. She's ever been to the program. Gina Marie, how are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm freaking stoked to see you guys and be on this, man. So thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm super excited. So thank you. So we mentioned it before. Obviously, you're a Staten Islander, just like us. Yep. So yep. You, yep. You yep. Grew up in Staten Island. What mm-hmm. part of Staten Island did you, were you in? Or are you in now? And you know what's what what's your favorite part about being a Staten Islander? Oh man! Well, I gotta say, um, def- definitely like the Ital- a lot of Italians out here, and uh, you know, family oriented. I know people in the neighborhood, people in like, you know, going to the gas station, going to the local Seven Eleven, you know, getting bagels, you know. So it's it's it just really family oriented. Um, you know, I pretty much lived in the same zip code my whole entire life, besides living in the Big Brother house for three months. So yeah, so same neighborhood all the time, and uh, you know, it's just. My parents literally le- can leave their front door open. The dogs sit there and people walk by. So, you know, I'm glad I just live in a really, really great neighborhood and great people around me. So it's good. What do you think it is that the Big Brother casting loves about Staten Island? Because every four or five seasons, you have to have a Staten Islander on. You know what's funny? I was, well, I was always been a fan of Big Brother. And, and when they interviewed me, they were like, Gina, are you a super fan? I was like, I wouldn't say I was a super fan. I was like, but I know the show. I know the characters. I watched it before because it is like super fans. So I don't want to put myself in a category as super fans because they knock my ass down real quick. So <laughs> I was oh, I was always a fan. And when my friend was like, oh, my God, they're having casting. And I'm like, well, I have a dance class. And I've been with the same dancing school for like 35 years. So I was like, well, I, I have dance class. Maybe I'll send in a videotape. So I was like, well, I don't think they're going to pick me. I'm from Staten Island and JoJo was on season 14. So I'm like, if they had someone from Staten Island, they're not going to pick another one from Staten Island. Answering your question, why they pick a lot of people from Staten Island, because we're absolutely fucking crazy and entertaining. That's why we get picked all the time. Right. I think you just like the accent and the attitude. It works great for television. So, so Joe, <laughs> you're watching back then, Alex Caldonado from East Coast. Yeah. He was before, he was before yes. Gene Ray, right? He, he was, was very, he was very 11. cool. Yeah, he, was, he, he um, played too mellow, I think. Yes, I was going to say, he didn't really play the game at all. And it's like, at the beginning, people try to kind of lay low. He came in as like, pretty much the opposite of the Staten Island stereotype. You know, if Gina Marie saw like all the way on one side, he was kind of like all the way on the other, which is weird because he had like a really great personality to him. And a lot of people, you know, liked him. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I liked him myself too. I thought he was, and you know what? You know what fucked him? Scar- sorry for the last of curse. You know what messed him up in that season? It was a damn winter season. Okay, so with like they were on strike or something that season, and they did those freaking pairs. Mm-hmm. If he wasn't paired up, he would have did so much better. He was really likable. The fans, producers, everyone liked him. And I knew Alex for years. He's actually um, married to uh, my friend Jackie that I danced with since I was 10 years old. So it's funny how we're a big brother family, dance family, and all around Staten Island family. Very cool guy. Very cool guy. So the last style there, Pooch, he didn't do too well. He, oh, he was, I know. Pooch is a great guy. We had him on. But yep. you know, the I've been saying this for years. I know he's not interested in times past, but you met you met him in person. Joe would be great to get some revenge for the Joes in style. <laughs> I think I think he'd be a great guy. He'd be talking to everybody in circles and yep. they'd be confused. Everyone would love him. And I don't know how we do in the competitions, but I think he'd have a good social game. What, what do you think about Joe from the time you spent with him uh, in New York City when you went to the uh, the Challenge Mania event with him? Oh, wait, this, this, this guy right here? Yeah, this guy right here. First of all, he was... 
Uh, he was awesome. I was like, I, and I felt like when I first met him that I actually knew him. And he's like, oh, I'm a Big Brother fan too. I was like, I was like, you are? I was like, bro, anybody that I instantly meet and get a good vibe from, I know they are good people. And since they are a Big Brother fan, they know the ins and outs of what's going on. That's always something good to know, especially with like POV challenges because it's almost like big brother always recycles competitions yeah. so i right. think joe will freaking kick ass man i honestly i mean it looks like he's built he's in shape he's ready to freaking rock yo yo when i sign up let's go let's go uh, they're still got, doing auditions joe did you audition this year no i did not oh they're still doing casting i have to tell you a little secret well i finally finally seen the premiere date which is june 17th 16th i think the premiere date i'm not gonna say who Someone had texted me. They're like, Gina Marie, I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything, but I got to like one of the last rounds of casting. And I go, they're still doing casting? I'm like, Please okay. tell so me it's a Style Islander. Uh, he's from Philly. Well, yeah. I just said he, but it's okay. It's a boy. Uh, he's from Philly. Philly and yeah. he's he's awesome. And But kind of new East Coast, which is good because we all like our East Coasters. And uh, oh. so, yeah, so they're still doing casting. So, Joe... If you don't put in, I'm going to have to send in your shit in my computer and, and like, make believe I'm you to send in your shit. Bro, I'm telling you, it's still a freaking time, man. It's never too uh, late. I don't know if he's going to do it this year, but Gene Murray, we have to at least get him in there in the system for the future because... Yes, 100%. All right, all right. I, I just, I know Joe, he can't do it right now. I get it. But Joe, I, I think America, I mean, it would be such a big split. Like, half of America would absolutely love you and the other half, yep. like... This guy is like no, absolutely he, not. America would love obnoxious me. New Yorker. I can't stand no. him. You don't think so? I think I think, they, I think, I think people hate the New Yorkers. Endearing. I hate people hate the New Yorkers. I think. I, no, you know, I, I'd be they, incredibly endearing. They they love us and they hate us, man. I gotta say, it's like some people love the New York attitude, and the other people like right. you know, we're just too much. That's why I said, like everyone's either you're a fan of them or you're not. So you know, love and hate. So it's all right. good. It's all good until they meet you in person. They're like, oh, we actually like you, Mike. Well, uh. I'm kind of fighting for a half million dollars. So, and then right. I live in a house with a bunch of half of them are morons. So it's kind of like, all right, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I guess you're not going to get along all the time. So it's all good. Yeah. As long as the only thing we need from Joe is if he actually got on, he needs to go and wear a sweatshirt on his first night in the house and then sneak in that, you know, I'm right t-shirt and then you whip it off on the <laughs> camera, the, you know, I'm right podcast. And we're all set. You get evicted right there. That's and then, it. And the show be, be good. <laughs> Production would throw me out so quick. <laughs> That's awesome. That's I'm awesome. Sure. What do you want to do? Everybody know I'm right. <laughs> we rapping. We rapping. <laughs> Imagine Joe in the in the uh, in, the, uh, in a, a meeting, and he's like, "Listen, we got to get this person out. You know I'm right." It's like Perfect. Superman. <laughs> I love it. There we go. Have it in the VR, like. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. I would definitely say Joe Calabrese, like Style New York podcast host. That'd be podcast host. Uh, yeah, but listen, Look Style Island. We got t-shirts. they love Style Island, so you, it's never you never know. It's not too late. Felicia was just on. She she was very old. Yes, I see so, that. You know, She's we'll, awesome. we'll see yep. Joe. Plenty of time to go. But for your genome race, the Island. What were some of your favorite places to eat? What are the what are the best pizzerias and restaurants in Style? Oh, man. Well, everyone knows, obviously, Goodfellas for pizza. Um, we do have uh, Bravo. I kind of like. I like Bravo. Goodfellas. Um, this is probably, like, my top two. Definitely Poor Pizzeria. Bravo is actually really nice. They hold- it used to be, I know I'm probably showing my age. I don't know if you guys would know this. It was the old Pizza Town. Do you guys remember that? I remember that. Okay, it was I the do. old Pizza Town. So, it like, and, and then it, I don't know if it was something else, but then actually uh, it turned into um, Bravo. So, you know, it's really nice. So they have a lot of sports things. Obviously, go Rangers, go Knicks. So, yeah, so uh, that's probably one of my uh, favorite places. Plus, it's in my neighborhood. So, you know, we, we always order from them. So, this is a controversial topic for Sun Islanders. <laughs> Maybe not just Sun Islanders, not Long Island as well. I'm on one side of this. Joe's like, you know, it's quality. You can't really knock it, but... Do you think that Ralph's ices have gotten too expensive? Oh, I mean, four seventy-five for a small is kind of crazy. 
You know what's funny? I usually never buy a small. I usually buy like the court. <laughs> That's what you gotta right. do. You gotta get the car. You have to get more to the party. That's, the only way to do that's it. like this big. Be like, yo. Then we just share it. So you get a lot more. You know what? Their prices did go up, but I have to say, I'm a real a Rouse fan. I don't really like uh, the Louis G's, but the Louis G's I gotta say is better with um uh, the jelly ring because they have like real jelly rings, and I feel like the Rouse Ice's jelly ring is not that great. But I do like if you ever tried the rainbow cookie at Ralph's Ice's. Yes, no, just no, no, the no, side, bro. You either got you either need the red velvet, the graham cracker, or the rainbow cookie. That's oh, it. you just pick literally pick my top famous besides oh the oh or the um, wait this one oh the cheesecake one because it has like chunks of cheesecake in it. Yeah, yeah but Ralph's Ra 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 definitely got expensive. Maybe like I don't know water prices went up in Staten Island, but yeah, they went up in prices. So <laughs> I need like a coupon from like uh wherever they gave coupons from. But I I did get a bag one time. I tell you this funny. I ordered from Ralph's from like a DoorDash, right? And on the bag it says, we love a big brother, Gina Marie. And I'm like, Sh they literally wrote it on the bag. I had tagged mm -hmm. Ralph's on it uh, wow. on Instagram. They reposted. I'm like, bro, do I get like free ices for life? Yeah, I was going to say, maybe some sort of endorsement deal. I was like, hook me up. That's what they do. They sucker you in buy the party bucket. Yeah, it'll right? Work. Yeah, the bucket, bro. I'm... I'm I could probably eat that in one sitting, man. I'm telling you, it's so bad. <laughs> I used to have the hookup. My friends worked at Ralph's once upon a time. Nice, nice. Right. That's what I need. Give them the, my phone number. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned the, the the dancing, your performer, graduated from the Conservatory of Dramatic Arts. Yes. So when did you start dancing? Uh, when did you start doing stuff competitively? Uh, and then later on in life, uh, you became a model, right? So what was your entry point and how did you become a model too? So uh, basically, I always did like entertainment. I was always in dance and I was always in pageants. And like, I was kind of like uh, the the kid with the bucky teeth and, you know, little chubby kid. And, and like, I always loved to dance and I wasn't the best. And I was okay with that. I just loved being on stage. I made amazing friends. And it was one time I did pageants and I seen this six for trophy and I was like, I need to win that one day. It took me like seven years, but I, I finally won it. I, I just love to be on stage and it grew me to like, even though I lost, always to try again and actually win. And that's why I, I never wanted to quit. So I always did, you know, pageants. I loved acting and uh, I did a couple movies. I was with a movie with uh, Denzel Washington, Jennifer Aniston, Poor Rudd. Um, I actually did Sopranos. I did two episodes of Sopranos, which was cool. I actually filmed it on Staten Island on Sam Lane when... Uh, Back in 1997. So I was, I did that. And, uh, and then obviously, you know, doing, you know, movies kind of TV. I mean, not that like every actor wants to do like reality TV, but it was kind of like, oh, big brother, I get to do competitions, kick some ass and I could potentially win some money and, and even be on TV. So that was kind of like the, just the next route I went. Then modeling, you know, came into the picture of like, uh, you know, I did the Bud Light calendar. Um, I, I worked for a Playboy Golf before. So it, it, was, it was kind of cool. It was kind of cool. So it's uh, anything with entertainment, I'm, I'm super involved in. So I don't dance too much anymore. Just that ACL surgery. But, you know, I, I'm getting a little better. So we're good. <laughs> Lots to unpack here. My quick question before we move on is you've seen me in person. You get to see Nick, but based on this right now, you get a good idea of what you might see in person. Do you think Nick and I would be a good fit on stage hosting a show, having a live podcast, doing a live interview with somebody? What do you think? Absolutely. Only because, first of all, you guys are not too bad to look at. So there's a plus for having something. Hey, my wife agrees. Well, <laughs> you know, what it is? it's funny because I, I love this, like how we're all – you know, obviously we're we're together, but not together because we're all in different, you know, houses yeah. and whatnot. But like for to be like intimate and, and have like for stage and people to because I did see things like that for like I used to go to signings. It used to be like um like during Comic Con, there would always be people like on stage. I think you feel more intimate with people because like you feel like their energy. So I think if you had a stage or did anything like that, I think people would actually love to do it, love to sit there actually in person. And I think it'd be great. People could answer questions like interactive yeah. people love that shit i love that shit so i gave it the two thumbs up and if you need a sponsor let me know i got my company i could do some dog treats and sponsor well, you know what I, we don't think it <laughs> i think uh you know joe might be onto something here i think yeah. you know we use gina marie's connections to get a venue there you go. <laughs> and we have gina marie nicole zanata and jay mitchell on with us 
And the five of us, you know, all of the New Yorkers, the heavy New York accents. It. I mean, it'd be fantastic. We could do it. We could do it at Bravo Pizza. And, we got to get uh, Jay to come in from the Bronx. That might feel. That's a, yo. He'll come from the Bronx. He came to. Uh, he's he got to take to... the four train. Thing. He's got to take the fire. Yeah. <laughs> he'll take the fire he truck. <laughs> he came to the set. Uh, the he came to Staten Island because we went to uh, the Big Brother premiere after my season. So season sixteen, he uh, came with me to the premiere party and stuff like that. But yeah, oh, the only way I'll come to, to if we do it on person, like on stage thing, I need to have one of those guns that shoot like uh, t shirts out of. That's the only way I'm coming. If I could shoot that shit off, and I'm gonna get to go. <laughs> we gotta Everybody find the bazooka. Like the one that they do, the, uh, the the stadiums and the arenas, right? Yeah. Like, so, so when we give out the t shirts, that's the same t shirt you're going to be sporting on Big Brother in the Diary Room. See, it's a win win all around. We good. So, I got all this shit planned. I'm, 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 right, I'm, I'm writing things down right now as we speak. All right. <laughs> we're we're planning this. We're planning this right now. <laughs> I love the, I love the synergy right now. This oh, is, this thanks. It's like my green book. I got it from the dollar store. Well, the dollar 25 store now. Bastards. Right, everything is going up in place. Tell me about it, I know. Terrible. So uh, my last question uh, from the the performance side Mm -hmm. of your life. Um, You are a teacher, coach, right? So these industries are are very competitive from a super Mm -hmm. young age for for young girls and young women trying to break in. It's very difficult. Uh, So what have you taught your your students or girls that you've coached up? Is there any uh, advice in particular that you give them? Yeah, definitely. Because um, I wouldn't have like the, the when, when I first started pageants, a lot of things that they focused on was um, speaking, public speaking. So I think that's really good for 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 young girls, for for children, you know, uh, guys, girls, everybody, because when you could you can use those skills in like a job interview, you could, you could have those skills if you're, um, you know, uh, in front of a class for your school and presenting a project. So it gets kind of your fear around people and let you be a little bit more, uh, not shy. I'm not saying everyone's got to be all crazy and outgoing and, you know, like me, but I think it gets them a little bit out of the bubble. And nowadays, since like everyone's on their phone, kids are more sheltered inside the house. I think when they could interact with kids better and, uh, you know, just, you know, I think it's just good to be around other kids with sports. And uh, I I always tell them, too, it's not all about winning. I always tell them, listen, winning's fun. Don't get me wrong. But if you know that you did your best and you still lost, you still did you still did your best. And that's kind of like with Big Brother. It's like, oh, Gina Marie, were you mad that you lost? I'm like, well, yeah, OK, I'm million dollars. But, bro, do you realize I walked in with nothing and I came out with fifty thousand dollars? So I, I ain't even mad at it. I no. even like with pageants, I, I lost, but then I kept on competing. I made amazing friends and I just continue. So it's always like if, if you get knocked down, just pick yourself up and keep on going. That'd be hobby be my best advice for like everybody that I teach coach or anything like that. So, cause life is, life is great. If you, if you make it great, it is, it Did is. Did you play any sports growing up? Or just I, dance. Yeah, no, I played a lot of things. I played, uh, I used to play hockey, like on the street, touch football. I was a tomboy, like a oh, whole hard when I, when I was a kid. Like, I was always, like, the girly girl, but I was always like, yo, I'll bust your face. And, like, play sports and hockey, baseball, um, uh, basketball. Like, I was never, like, on a team, like, yeah. like in high school and things like that, but, but I always played, like, uh, like at middle field and played with all the guys and stuff like that. So, I'm, I'm, if I have to toot my own horn, toot, toot, I'm pretty good at everything. No, I'm kidding. I suck at something. But, but no, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm good at bowling and mini golf. Who wants you to said you went to New York, right? Yeah, yeah, I went to New York. Yep, we're actually having a car show soon, and I always, uh, uh, always feel good when I go to the car show because it's in my old high school, and, and all the money goes towards, um, goes to the football team. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. So, well, Nick and I, we still play sports, but our softball team, after making the the championship in the last couple of years, this year we didn't really have anything going on. I mean, Nick still plays, but um, always, always a bridesmaid, never a bride, right? You finish runner up on Big Brother. Nick and I have finished runner-ups oh, in the championship yeah. multiple times. <laughs> we have an appearance over here. Oh, my God. That's great. What are you doing, big guy? <laughs> Amazing. Okay, you excited? I'll take you out in two minutes. He wants to jump on the pocket. That's Diesel, by the way. See you later. <laughs> That's so everybody, scary. Everybody in that house has energy, huh? <laughs> yeah. He just got home from – I just got me old flushed. He just came home from school. 
So I just got him. I just got him home. Say hi to everybody. Say hi to Nick and Joe. Say hi. But if you need someone for your softball team, or girls allowed, I'll play. Well, my Thursday night team is a co-ed team, so well, let's fucking go. How's, bro, how's the ACL? Go. How's the ACL though? <laughs> That's good, bro. It's 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 been over TikTok, TikTok. It's been over a year. My doctor gave me the go to go. Bro, All right, I'm, you, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you up on that offer. I think. No, I'm we'll be, serious. We'll I got from the field. Wait, I thought you had a hip replacement too. Yeah, I did too. I did too. That's why when people ask, would you be on the challenge? I'm like. Listen, I had two ACL surgeries and I have a hip replacement. You know what? If they don't mind a little clicking going around and me, well, I would totally be on the challenge. If I could. But yeah, no, it's all good. I could still, uh, I could still hold it down. So if you guys need an extra play, let me know. I got to fuck it up my I skills. Will. Listen, I mean, good. the challenge, like, you got to do better than Enzo did. And here's a challenge. Oh, to you, so. I love Enzo, my poor Enzo. I love it. Love Enzo. Love Enzo. He is so, fantastic. fantastic. He is Jersey guy. You're still holding it down? Where Where were your favorite places to, to club and party it up in New York City and, and Jersey? And Jersey, because... Man, I got to say, I mean, back in... The, not back in the day, maybe like a good 10 years ago, I liked... Uh, Oh, let me like recap. Let me let me get the blonde bleach <laughs> head going over here. She um, must want to play and out of there. No, you know, I really didn't hang out in Staten Island. I, I um I went to 46 Lounge, uh 466. A lot of people from 466 end up going to Pasha, really never making a Pasha. Like okay. I, if you guys know, I actually don't drink like at all. Never did, probably never will. I'm just like, they're like, Gina Marie, you don't drink. I'm like, no, I'm just naturally hyper and like I, I don't drink. So I'm usually good to hang out with. So if you guys ever go out, I'm usually the designated driver. So everyone loves hanging out with Gina Marie. So, but yeah, before I usually hang out in Jersey a lot, probably. I've been to DJs a couple of times. Not really such a DJs fan, but I went there a couple of times because then you know I'm friends oh. with Angelina. Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't know that's it. No Jersey shorts. Not. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I love DJs. That's my home. Oh, yeah. get out there. I'm good. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Yeah. No, I like, I like, I went through, I actually bought Judd to, to, to fucking DJs. Judd. Oh my God. Bro, what I, I, he fucking loved it. He loved it. I was like, bro. It must have been like a, like a culture shock for him. Oh like, my what, God. Like, like all, places like this exist. My, my entire family, first of all, loves John. I talked to him like every other day and it was him and Jesse came down and I'm like, bro, I got to show these guys a good time. I'm like, bro, I'm going to take you to the Jersey shore. Let's rock and roll. He loved it. I told Jet, I was like, I was like, this is a different atmosphere than you guys are probably used to because John has like one, one, uh, one uh traffic light in his whole entire town. So like, wait, you come to that line because there's like 80 billion in speed cameras everywhere. So yeah, he loved it. He loved it. I'm glad he got to experience it. So he liked it a lot. Plus, he said all the girls were hot, so it's good. And he they loved him with that accent. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. There they are. So Gina Ray, you mentioned it before you were a fan of the show. You don't want to come across as a super fan. Mm -hmm. You did that application. The first time you applied, is that when you got on? And what was that process like for you going through the application process and auditions? You know what? People, it's not like people get mad at me when I, when I say this. And it, it's kind of, it's funny because like you auditioned the first time and got on. And I, I, I said, yeah, yeah. It, it, it literally was like, I was always a fan. I'm like, you know, let me audition. I'm like, shit, what, what's the worst can, that can happen? I literally, it was right before Hurricane Sandy. And I recorded a video just to have a little bit more enlightenment to to because of Hurricane Sandy. So I literally was right behind. It was right around Halloween. I had like fake bullets because I just did a modeling show for for costumes that I had fake bullets and I had like a helmet on. And I was like and it was like during Hurricane Sandy time, like, oh, if you want to instead of Hurricane Sandy, we're going to do um, 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 a zombie apocalypse, like if something happened. So I recorded that. I literally sent in that video as my casting video, which was, I, not that I didn't give a shit about getting, I'm like, well, I needed a video. Let me just send in this. I figured it was funny. And, and I got a call back. I, I went to Manhattan. Uh, I, met, I met a couple of, of the producers. And then next thing, it's a real crazy process. It's a real, like, you have to get like blood work. You got to get like, fill out like a page of, of testing shit this big, go against, um, go to like a psychiatrist thing. But you know what? I go, well, I probably failed. The psychiatry test. That's why I was actually on Big Brother. So like, did you pass? I'm like, no, I totally failed. That's why they accepted me. But yeah, it's it's. 
<laughs> it's a crazy, crazy process. They literally fly you to LA for like the, the for like the next round. And I remember I was doing a pageant. I was emceeing a pageant. And they called me. They're like, Gina Marie, can you get like blood work done and like and like fly here? I'm like, um, right now because I actually thought I got cut. Because they were sending me home early. I'm like, bro, it's like, I'm not going home early. You know how long the flight is? Like, my parents are going to pick me up at the airport, like, on Friday. I'm not leaving Thursday. So, it's like, oh, shit, I got cut. And then when they called me up, they're like, can you get all this? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, all right. So, and then I, everything was approved. I got everything. And then they fly you out. And then if you don't realize, you're in sequester for, like, a week with, like, and they, they, get, they get menus. And they slide them underneath your door. And then you get them, okay. And you circle what you want. You cannot interact with nobody. During casting, you're allowed to like have like a gym session. But when you actually get on the show, they keep you in the hotel room for like a week. And they, they give you a DVD to watch like Big Brother DVDs. It's it's crazy. I mean, I mean, listen, it goes with the process. I mean, if you can't handle processing, then you're not ready for the freaking show. So, you know, so it, it was a, it was crazy, but all, all good fun. So I'm, I'm always excited that I did it. It was a great experience and I have wonderful friends and family from it. So it's great. How did you find out that you were cast? What was the process like from there then scrambling to pack for such so a big they, time and short notice and picking your outfits and stuff? Yeah. So time when it gets down to like, I'm going to say since, since it was like, I know it's in July now, but since when it was used to be like in June, I would say probably about like May. What they say is they kind of don't tell you that you're going to be on the show. So what they do is like, they'll tell you like, oh, you made top 50 or you made the top 25, like through an email, they'll call you like, okay, great. So what they do is they kind of trick you and they're like, not trick you, but like, I kind of know it was coming. They were like, oh, Gina Marie, we kind of wanted to get more footage. So we wanted to come to like your hometown to get more footage. So I'm like, okay, so like, what do you do? So obviously family oriented, they came to my house to film my family. And then, and now I'm like top 25. I'm like, well, maybe I actually got picked to go on. So let me try to get things like in order, just in case. And they kind of tell you that, like, make sure you get things in order, just in case you are, you know, taking away and going. So you get things pre prepped like your car insurance or your phone or you know your house whatever you need to do you get that kind of pre-prepped you don't get picked ah, you did all that shit for nothing but whatever so now i'm with my family we're eating we're, we're uh we're eating dinner all of a sudden i go to serve the macaroni and boom there's my fucking big brother key right in the middle of the macaroni i'm like wow. how can you be no more italian than Staten island than this i was like Holy shit. So literally they, they, they film your reactions, you know, everything else. And like, right then from there, you have a person that's like your handler. They're like, okay, you have 30 minutes to pack. And when I tell you that's legit, they give you like 30 minutes to pack. And obviously you you have things like, I, I I think I packed like 30 pounds of like eyelashes, like my makeup, like, and, and then like my clothes. So they were like, okay, and you literally, they give you a big brother bag, which I still have. It's like hanging up over there. They give you a big brother bag. You're allowed to pack stuff in and one suitcase. When I tell you it's literally one fucking suitcase in that big brother bag, whatever you could possibly fit, that's what you take. And they literally like took my phone they took my phone. They were like, okay, you're packed. They're like, say goodbye. I'm like, yo, we're out. Like it was, it was quick, easy. I wasn't allowed to say anybody, like say anything body. And when I was in through the hotel, like I had to like, not even like look at anybody. I'm like, oh my, almost like I was getting kidnapped. Like legit, I was getting kidnapped kind of, but it was like, like, I couldn't say anything. Like even bigger than him, like, oh, like, cause you would get, you would be like, all right, you already said something. You're, you're out of here. We're going to pick someone else. So it was crazy. Half an hour packing, you're out. So it was it was crazy. Like that's it's like legit. Like it's legit. It's crazy. Was the worst part about living in the house being that there was only one toilet? If not, what else was really bad? Well, I mean, you it's probably it wasn't so bad. We kind of like learned how to do it. Like it sucked because if you guys know the bathroom, and there's a camera right here. Yeah. So when you go into the bathroom, it's like if someone like walks in on you, be like, oh, fuck, you got your pants down right on camera. So we kind of made it where when you have the water on, that meant someone was in the bathroom. So don't don't go in, go in the door. And then after like the first three days, the bathroom stunk. I was like, oh, like you couldn't get the smell out of it. Yeah. But which was cool about the bathroom that you guys mentioned this is um, they literally use the same door which is kind of cool because I end up, if you notice, I think they paint over it or whatnot, but obviously the set's the way the set and sometimes the doors are the same because the bathroom, the same size concept, but they'll, they'll, the sinks are the same. They might move them, but everything's pretty much the same. There's people's names engraved 
on the door. Ooh. And it's so freaking cool because when you're in the house for the first time, you're obviously like a Big Brother fan. So when you see these legends' names on like the bathroom door, you're like, holy shit. Like I'm kind of like you don't even consider yourself a part of that. But like at the end, like I have exter I wrote exterminators. Like you're not supposed to write anything. So I had like a safety pin and I was carving like, exterminators. And then I was like, I was like, Andy, um, how do you spell exterminators? I didn't even know how to spell exterminators. So we spell so I'm writing it. And it's really cool. So if you're ever in the house and look at the bathroom door for any future people that are going in, you'll see all the names. But there was a bathroom upstairs in the HOH room. But for me personally, every every time someone was HOH, it was kind of like their own bathroom. So I was always kind of like respectful and be like, oh, can I go use your bathroom? Because I didn't want to just go in someone's HOH room and be like, yo, this is my room. What are you doing in here? So I was always respectful asking if I can use the bathroom up there. It was a little bit more private besides the mirrors. If you get too close, you can probably see everything. But yeah, but it, it was it was nuts. But everyone kind of got the whole, we learned how to use it. But it did stink. Definitely stink. And you guys had to clean it yourself, right? So. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Good. Thank you for bringing that up because I could have people that actually would agree to this. You know, I was only, I was like, besides I think, Alyssa, we were like the only one that cleaned. So what they do is they give you, uh, I mean, everyone cleaned up their own mess, of course, but like even, well, Erin too, Erin cleaned a lot because that was like her thing to like, uh, it's kind of like, like you cut your own things like, okay, I got to clean. That'll take you out of your mindset of like thinking too much. Be like, oh, let me just clean and get my mind focused and, and yeah. everything else. So they give you a vacuum during the live evictions. So it looks kind of clean because you're all sitting there. So the, obviously I vacuumed, I cleaned up, I dusted the pillows. So I was like literally when the old, I cleaned the toilets, I had the gloves on. So yeah, I was like pretty much. And then like I tried to do the laundry. We had so many freaking forks and plates. The dishes, the first three days piled and piled and piled because we don't have a dishwasher. So I literally got dental floss from the dye rooms. They have like extra like dental floss and all this other shit. So I took the dental floss. I got everybody's plate. And prior, when we used to do competitions, they would get your name like with that sticky thing. And they would put like, okay, Gina Marie, this is like your shirt. So I would get everyone's name off their costumes after we were done. And I would stick it on a cup. And I'm like, yo, this one's yours, has your name on, this one's yours, this one has name on, because we always eliminate. So I took the rest of the the the, the knives, the, the forks and all the plates, I stuck them in the cabinet and I write, I wrapped dental floss around it. It's like, everybody fucking touches this cabinet is getting it. So after that, there was no dishes ever, ever, ever thing of dishes. I like solved the whole dish craze and everyone's scared to touch it. I was like, and so it, it, it worked out well. So I got the cleaning, all the dishes, real dumb real quick i was kind of like that mom but like not like that mom so it was kind of funny so yeah i got that settled and then the washer and dryer was another story the cooking another and story. they gave this they gave this cheap ass detergent that was like water base i'm like bro i need my tide i'm like i need some fucking tide in here so but yeah then there was washer and dryer so if someone was washing clothes you had to wait and the towels just build up because during competitions, you have all those dirty towels and you need to do your own laundry. They don't do your laundry. The only time they do your laundry is when you're HOH and you get special laundry, which you actually send it out and they send it back to you. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. The cooking and cleaning actually got you very far in the game. That's le it legitimate. Oh, it's a legitimate I point. Thank you. That was like kind of like my strategy. And I'm like, listen. Yeah. I can do the girl's makeup, so I'll be like the girly girl, but I'm like, bro, I can cook. So, you know, it's always that saying, but like, th through a man's heart is always through their stomach or whatever that saying is. So I'm like, bro, I got to cook for these motherfuckers. I'm like, they got to love me. And they had no, I would try to make, and the whole funny thing with the chicken parm is because I would make it for everybody. So when Nick had got evicted, I was like, no more chicken parms for all of you. Like, they were like, oh man, and shit. I'm like, oh damn. Like, don't vote me out. But the cook always usually does pretty well because they cook for everybody. So and I had no breadcrumbs. I'm like, bro, don't want my HOH. Can I get some breadcrumbs in my HOH basket so I can make some real chicken palm? So it was kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Funny you mentioned, Nick. Uh, our next question. <laughs> yes. uh, well, well, first I'll bring up the point. Your your season was littered with some drama and controversy, sure, which sure. We'll, only, we'll only touch on. Uh, okay. My question <laughs> is, do you actually stay in touch with Nick at all? Uh yeah, well, yeah, I, I actually, it's funny. I actually, I had uh, spoke to him a few weeks ago. Uh, I don't know if you guys know my Twitter got hacked. 
so bad. And I'm like, so I actually wrote to him and I'm like, Nick, do you happen to know anybody I can contact with Twitter or someone that knows that I could possibly get my account back? And I like all his stories. He just had a baby and she's absolutely beautiful. So, you know, I like a couple of stories. I might comment on stuff. I mean, obviously he's, he's with somebody of course, and, she, and she's probably amazing and uh, he's doing really well. So yeah, so we, we still, uh, we, we still, you know, keep in touch and whatnot. No, no bad you know, shit there. So we're all good. He was always a nice guy. And he's and always did, did he help you get the Twitter back? I didn't freaking oh. bastards. It's like some Bitcoin shit. I'm like, bro, really? Like, I really only go on Twitter during like Big Brother time. I'm like, you really got to fuck up my shit? So yeah, I still didn't get it back yet, but you know, it's all good. I contacted like everybody, bro, to try to get that shit back. But you know, maybe one day, I don't know. Maybe Big Brother good. could help. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I'm like, <laughs> All right, I have to mention this once because sure. as a super fan, I have to mention it. Uh, one of the greatest wars, rivalries in the Big Brother house in its history was Zimmerman versus Suckerman, right? How How is it living through that in the moment while you were on the show? Oh, my God. So do you know how it first happened? I, I loosely remember. I don't think Nick does. I don't much. think, like, because obviously there's editing and, of course, right. there's... But like, this is what had happened. Now my, okay, try to make this. Okay, so my strategy was at the last night of my HOH, like rain, whatever, I would always give someone my room because the last couple of hours during the live eviction on the last day of your HOH, everybody's scattering like cockroaches. We're gonna vote for, we're gonna do this. And shit changes in a second. In a second. So now if I'm on my HOH room eating popcorn, having my feet up and doing my freaking nails, I don't know what the hell is going on downstairs. So basically I had to be downstairs with everybody else and sleep down here. So I'm like, I knew I was going to sleep downstairs the next day because I wasn't HOH anymore. So I obviously I gave my room so I could be downstairs. So then Amanda, I think, was taking Nick's hat. And then I was like, I hid it underneath the couch cushion so she wouldn't find it. So now everyone's like, uh, oh, uh, what, um, are you going to vote for Amanda or whatever staying? So now she's in the diary room. She comes out of the diary room, right? Now she's baking. She's like, <laughs> I'm like, bitch, what the fuck you got? A smirk on your face. Like, you know, that cocky face. I'm like, bro, it got me heated because, you know, we don't like that shit. Oh, so she, was, like, she was cocky. All right. I was like, what? What like what are you what that smirk? But Gina Marie, I'm just cooking. I'm like, bro, that fucking smirk. I'm like, you want to smack it up someone's face. So now we're going back and forth. And I was like, I was like the Eminem. I would say I was like Eminem, meaning like you know when he's doing the rap and he made fun of himself. I'm like, bro, if I made fun of myself, you can't make fun of me and everything. So I was like making fun of myself. So she had no ammo at me. And then she must have got so mad. She came up to me and then like Judd's like, whoa, ladies, like calm down. What do you do? Because you can't hit nobody in there. You know, and stuff like that. And I'm playing Jenga and everyone like still to this day be like, bro, you were like mad calm, still fucking focusing with Jenga and shit. Because if I didn't have the Jenga, I'd probably be going up, throwing hands and fists yeah. and punches. And I, I wouldn't want to hurt anybody. We're showing what Star Island was all about. Yeah. So I was like, oh, man. But I have to say that fight, I still laugh at. And it was actually Amanda's birthday the other day. And we're really good friends now. Like it, it, she has like four, like three kids now. She's married. I was invited to a wedding. We're, you know what it is? It's kind of like Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens in the Big Brother house stays in the Big Brother. So, you, so if you want to be my friend outside the house when we're not competing for freaking money, I'll welcome everybody with open arms to be my friend and be within my life. So me and her are friends now, and it's funny because when I tagged her, I wish her a happy birthday. I had all the pictures of us. I had a picture of us fighting. Like in the in the montage thing, I just like, bro, we can laugh at that shit now. I'm glad it just, I'm glad it entertain y'all. That's what I, I'm happy about. So you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> and you mentioned the fact that you couldn't spell exterminators before, uh, <laughs> but your strategy was later in the game joining the exterminators. You lost to Andy. I think it was seven to two in the final vote. I mentioned this to you before. I thought you should have won that season. Thank it you. It is what it is. Uh, is there any scenario that you played out in your head where you're thinking like I could have won? What was your biggest mistake? Do you think that cost you the game? Oh, uh, probably the biggest mistake. I mean, through the game in general is probably keeping my mouth shut a, a little bit more and, and not, you know, being, you know, staying stupid shit or just like calming down probably a little bit. 
But you know what? If uh, getting through the game and, and things that I've done, you know, Erin helped me out a lot because Erin won like HOH like back to back. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't even have made it towards the end and as far as I did. But I'm, I was kind of like, like almost like Derek and, 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 um, and Cody, it was like how they were like the hit man. And like, if Cody knew he was going to lose against Derek, he would have took him anyway. So like, if you notice me and Andy were the first two people inside the house. So when we first entered, I was like, bro, first two in last two out. And we kept that. We literally had like a, a, not even like a handshake, but as soon as we said that for the first 10 seconds of walking into the house, we kept that deal throughout the end. It's like the first two in, last two out, be like, hell fucking yeah. So like, if I knew I could probably beat Spencer, would I pick Spencer? No, I totally would have picked Andy. If it would have been a mistake, yes. But but the way I felt, I thought Andy deserved it better, even though he would have beat me. But, but you know what it is? You know why I didn't win? I didn't get votes. I had to, even though I love everybody that voted, you know, Alyssa, Helen, you know, everybody, they were just, they were just bitter. Like, I oh, agree I with that. I think you were a victim of a bitter jury. I was and it's happened and it's happened a few times. You know what? It sucks because nowadays if people would change their vote, be like, Gina Marie, I probably would have voted for you now. I'm like, oh, thanks a lot. Cause you just cost me like freaking half a million dollars, but it's all good. But they probably would, even though Andy's awesome, you know, and stuff like that, he, he deserves it and he's great. And listen, if things would have turned different, who knows my life would have been different. So I, I'm okay with it. But like I said, I would have took Andy to the end. It's probably not really much. I would change probably just keeping my, my mouth a little better and probably would have had a little bit of a better speech. I was super nervous. Obviously I talk loud. I mumble, not really all that smart up here. So my words, I can't probably use a little bit better, but yeah, my speech definitely would have had uh probably practice a little bit more. So yeah. Yeah. Fair points. Fair points. Thank you. Uh, you recently, you teased big brother 26 on your Instagram. Were you approached to return? Can you share anything no, about that? No. Oh man. So here, this was, this was just like real good timing, which is crazy. So when this was last, now we're going back to last year real quick. So last year, Julie Chen had put all the second place, all the pictures of the second place winners on big Bro on her Instagram. They're like, Oh, how would you feel about a second, um, a second chance? I'm like, motherfucker, tell me I'm getting the call right now. I'm like, cause how amazing for the 20 uh 25th season would there be like an also of all the second place winners recompete i'm like that would be amazing so obviously they do stuff to like get y'all amped up and stuff like that now me i'm like oh damn i just seen that on instagram i'm like oh bro i just freaking pulled my acl so now i'm like i'll call my my surgeon i'm like listen i'm like uh if i had acl surgery would i be able to compete in june though he's like gina marie no. So I was like, all right. I was like, I'm going to wait till like April. If I didn't get a call, that means I'm not doing second chances. I'm probably not getting in a phone call, probably not getting a phone call anyway. So I'm like, you know, we're going to scratch up and have the surgery. So now going to this year, I just happened to do like, um, what the heck was it? Um, an AI logo. Yeah. For Big Brother 26. So I, I probably, probably pretty people thought it was AI anyway, which obviously make it look like it's fake. Soon as I put that up, it was so weird and such a coincidence that Julie Chen, the very next day, put the premiere dates. I'm like, bro, they're like, Gina Marie, did you know something? I'm like, maybe, maybe not. So yeah, no, I didn't do it. I didn't know shit. It was just like a real fucking coincidence that I just posted that shit and then Julie Chen did the thing. But as I, far as I know, the only thing I probably know is because what my friend texted me is they're actually still doing casting. That's the only probably the little 411 that I know personally that there's actually, it's not over yet. It's not over till the it's over. So, you know, there's you could still have a chance to be on Big Brother. And so yeah, so that's the only kind of little info that Jim, I want to start your campaign campaign now to be on reindeer games this this summer. Oh, no, can, <laughs> dude, can can I okay, let me ask you, and I'm gonna interview you guys and ask you a question because I was watching with my mom, with my family. Now, you tell me what you think. I loved that concept so much better. What do you guys think about the reindeer games? Can I freaking loved it yeah, i, I mean, love it course, it's it, it's not really politics it's win right. and you win and i was it's a was group it's a group twist. of real it's a group of the really well-known best players it's a condensed version less politics less yeah. strong i just wish it was like in real time not 
Right. Oh, we're going to film it and then just air it. Like yep. they could have did it five straight days in a row, aired it on CBS for five they days. They could make it like a shark. And week, they, like, you want, uh, like you a... Wanted, you, they didn't stay in the house, which I thought was weird. They stayed in hotels. So I thought mm -hmm. they, they should have stayed in the house. And I thought so too. But yeah, I loved it. What... I thought it was great. I thought it was great because, I, like you guys said, da -da, no more politics to vote. Because I, I see like, okay, I use always use you use the term. You're like, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. So for that, when you actually compete against someone else, you're not a competing against. Oh, um, are you gonna vote for me to say? Like it's so fucking stupid. Like, bro, let me compete. If I suck at a competition, yeah. if I lose, be like, oh well, Gina Marie, you suck. Bye, bitch. So it's kind of like if I lost because of me, that I lost because of me. If I was the best and I beat everybody, then I deserved to win because I kicked everybody's fucking ass. So that's why I love the reindeer games. I loved everybody on it. I thought the concept was great. I, I I really I really really loved it. I wish they did that again, or maybe have an also a celebrity version like that. Loved yeah, I, it. I was loved thinking it, they were it. doing Celebrity Big Brother there, but they didn't. So yep. you know, I, listen, I, I, I like to see Celebrity Big Brother that. come yeah. back again, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we'll see who, who's in it. Uh, I also think they they should do a like they did the challenge version of Big with Big Brother castmates. I want to see I want to see Big Brother with the challenge people. You know, I think they could do is their own spin off, put it on Paramount Plus. We talked to some challengers. You know, I think that might do so well. But have you watched? Did you have you been keeping up with Big Brother? Have you watched the last three seasons? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. All I right, mean, so who, uh, give, give me your favorite, your favorite competitor from the last three seasons. We'll see. Oh, the, man. The COVID days. I gotta like really like think because I'm gonna be missing people. Yeah. Well, first of all, last season, I love Matt. I Matt's love, our I guy, love, Maddie. We love, we love Matt too. Bro, Matt. Don't make me watch right now because he's gonna see this. Be like Gina Marie, stop! I, I gotta love post this him. Like, tag Matt. In the hill I love that. No, don't tag him. He's gonna be like Gina Marie. Shut up! No, I think he's he's first of all he's amazing. He's so fucking cute, and I just love like that Olympian vibe. Like, bro, he knew he could like play. He like basically he knew he knew how to box. So he's coming in like, and it's like you almost feel threatened by that. But like I knew that he was such a good person, and then such a great competitor. It was a best combined like a little clay of like the best of both worlds to be like a big brother player you know so you know i love that i mean i always love someone with like muscle you know and it's like oh you think they can win i mean i loved matt i mean uh i gotta think of like all the things i mean competition wise oh. yeah so two years ago three years ago now you had the cookout season the last season, Taylor won, and then last year, obviously, Jag won. So that's the last three seasons. Well, Jag is awesome too. So I think, Jag and then I loved. Um... Bowie, yeah. How about Bowie Jane? You a Bowie Jane fan? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I loved all of them. I, I met a lot of them through um, at the premiere party and everything. Yeah. And I, 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 I love Daniel. <laughs> I didn't understand. Yeah, I love last name. Him, bro. You know, Joe and I always say the, the last three seasons, like if it wasn't for the way, you know, obviously the alliance and the cookout, but like sure, Derek, sure. Derek X and Christian, like Birkenberger, like those are two of the best competitors that we've ever seen that didn't even make it into like the final five because they just yeah. got nicked because of the many lines. But they they were they were they were compies. Yeah, okay, and they definitely. took each. They should have worked together, but they took that, each other out. So that's kind of like if you know if you uh if you can't beat them, kind of join them. So if you All know right. you really can't compete, beat because then you have like a power like duo of of you 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 can't lose like you know so sometimes it's like you're thinking like uh when you're like oh they're never gonna you know team up and compete against each other when you have a secret alliances and you tag team you got so much muscle and power right. bro you can't like lose man so it's crazy but yeah right. i love that i love i i like i like the smart gameplay people don't get me wrong because that's a, also a great strategy but for me i love to compete i i feel like i'm in like uh you know, when you watch that show when you were kids, um, Legends of the Hidden Temple, be like, bro, I want to go on that and compete, you know, when you were a kid. So, like, now I'm Big Brother or doing, like, something like Challenge. Like, holy shit, like, I'm an adult and doing all this shit. So, I just love to compete. So, I love a great competitor. It might hurt people, like, in the house. Be like, oh, well, he's so great at everything or she's so great, so we got to kick her out. But, bro, I'm he I'm here to play. Like, I, yeah. like, I hate people that throw comps. Be like, bro, don't be a bitch. Like, like, play. Man. Like, I... I 
Like even when I wasn't even in, in, in like if I was in the POV comp and I didn't even need to win the POV, it's kind of like I still wanted to win, you know, just because I just wanted to win. So, you know, obviously strategy wise to win or not win, because then if you do win, you got to, you know, maybe take somebody off and then if it messes up your whole, you know, strategy along the line. So, you know, it's good to win and not win. But, you know, I would never throw a comp. I hate that. I I hate that. I, I like I like I like comp beast. Cause I'm like one of them. No. Sure, sure. <laughs> so do, do you wish that when you got on your season, the big brother, that it was maybe like, let's say four or five years later. Cause that's really where I think the game changed and it became a lot about like, I'm going to cash in here on Instagram as an influencer and get these endorsements. Do you think that for you financially wise post-show, it would have been better if you were on, let's say like, 2018 2021 what are your thoughts on that you know what no no because you know what like like jojo can even even you know back me up on this is like 10 years later like i'm still making money off of shit like i'll get like uh people will buy like my, my party pup stuff because they're big brother fans i literally did did, did um uh, personator uh, for Taylor Swift for, for my niece's uh, birthday party. And I had people mailing me like uh, uh, the printed picture for me to sign it and like send me money. So like I still make money. Of course, things are a lot bigger with like influence and Instagram wasn't really that popular. Right. Hello, baby. Instagram wasn't really that popular when uh when I was on it. So I would I change it about being on being on now or later? No, because I, I still bank off of shit 10 years later. So I'm not even worried about it. I mean, I I... I hate that people are on the show to like be famous. It's kind of like, I, I mean, I, I like a big brother fan that knows the show and, and everything else. And it, it's like, you got to know what's going on to like, you got to know what the POV is. You got to know what the HOH is. You got to know the comps. So, you know, like if you want to get on, be famous and go be on the fucking bachelor. I hate that show. It's like, go, Oh, I'm going to go win someone. Give me a fucking flower rose. I don't even got flowers around here, but I'm like, no, it's like you, you you're there. No, I, I mean, if you want to be an influencer, fine. You're banking money. Listen, I ain't mad. You getting paid? I'm happy for you. But no, I, I'm okay with the season that I was on getting shit because I, I'll still be making money. <laughs> so it's all <okay. laughs> Uh, Were you ever approached to do other reality TV? Uh, yeah, so I got um, Couples Therapy had asked me to do that. Um, What else? I did... I, I was doing... um. An own uh, my own show before I was actually on Big Brother. I think that's the reason why I got picked. I think Endemol was one of the producers or companies that were doing it. I was doing um um it was like a place in Staten Island. We were doing like a um it was a lingerie shop, and we were like the workers, and that was like its own separate reality show that that we were doing. So just that uh, I didn't get called from the challenge. I mean, they're they're probably scared to have me on because they know I would win. <laughs> <laughs> now can i give me respect them people because them shit's a fucking hard but would i would love to play absolutely even though with a bad hip and everything else but uh no not just uh just that not of like i know there's a new show called the goat that's on i think prime i don't know if you guys watched it yet have you seen heard of it heard of it never watched yeah i didn't watch it yet so there's that one and then like there's um which i love tiffany new york i love her i used to watch it back in back in the day that's why when uh hbic yeah, because when, when I met Chiselle, I was like, I was like, I was like, you know how much of a fan I was. I watched you like on Surreal Life, like back in the day. So, and she's just so awesome, and so pretty. So it was cool, really cool meeting her for the first time. But no, no other shows besides that so far. I mean, a couple of movie did uh, movie gigs. I got, I did music and stuff like that. But no phone calls yet. But I'm like, yo, Gina Marie's phone is free. If you need to call me for some shows to kick some ass, y'all, I'm here. What's up? Even with a bad leg, I'll still be kicking ass. <laughs> Listen, I'll take a one legged Gina Marie and an ass kicking yeah, contest. Exactly. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I might fumble and break something, but you know, I get up. Do you know I, I broke a toe and got stitches in the Big Brother house? Uh, do I remember that? Oh my God, bro, it's so bad. I, You know, those they changed them now, motherfucking Big Brother. Do you know those stupid spiral staircase that go up to the HOH room? Oh, that's right, you did. Oh my God, they, I remember that. They made those stupid flip-flops yeah, in the HOH basket, and I- Once you mentioned the spiral staircase, I remember. I, yeah, it doesn't have that anymore, so I slipped, I broke a toe, and guess what I had to do? I had to be on fucking roller skates the next day. And yep. you know what? Gina Marie still won. <laughs> What's up? And oh, then I, I got- I remember that now, the spiral staircase. Yeah, that's that stupid yeah. staircase. That was your punishment, right? You lost the, uh, well, you, no. Uh, was the, the skates like a punishment thing? 
No, the skates was was the last three part of the HOH. I had to wear that stupid dog cone. Speaking of dog cones, up. Oh, I know you want to go out. What are you? What are your nose? Oh, you think it got me? Oh, he's... <laughs> Love it. No, it's it's totally okay. Um, question: Are you ever going to revive your singing career? Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. I actually, I have... oh, she's recording. I don't. <laughs> so I'm not going to say much. But I'm gonna say my really good friend Jojo. Okay, not my my girl Jojo. My girl Jojo. We were doing a song, but he's a Staten Island rapper, and I've been in talks with him about some uh, some new music. So we'll see. Can't really say much, but we're uh we've been in talks for a couple of weeks. So you might see uh, new tunes from uh from Gina Marie. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yep. yep Breaking yep. news over there, Nick. Yeah, That's baby. Break news. And this is the perfect moment because you're a dog mom, right? Yay! Uh, Say hi, Diesel. Got, this is perfect. We could talk about Party Pop, your small Yay! business, um, selling, I guess, birthday packages and treats mm -hmm. uh, for people who want to help sell their celebrate uh, birthdays for their dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you donate uh, portions to charity. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so my uh, my dog turned my past dog that just uh, had passed away. My dog Zeus, it was um, amazing. Um, he turned one, and I was like, I know there's like a lot of dog food that's not really great. And then I was like, well, I can make my own, you know, healthy snacks for the dogs. And hence, my boyfriend came up with the name Party Pup, and straight from there, you know, I made up a website, got, registered the name. Did all this stuff and you know five years later i'm, I'm still you know doing it and it, and it's it's been amazing i'm in like a, i'm in like a few stores and it's really cool i do a lot of charity for uh, for dog rescues and and for everything and it's just like uh it's just kind of like a business that i just love doing and it and it's and it's great it's great so thank you for asking about that it's like it's my heart it really is it really is this is my new pup diesel because i was devastated when my dog passed and uh my parents are like oh we're gonna have to get you another german shepherd i'm like okay i'm not ready yet but let's go. So yeah, he's he's been awesome. He just came home from school. I didn't see him for three weeks. I was dying without him. But he's good now. He's good now. So Jim, right in your life or your career or your reality TV career, what would you say is your you know I'm right moment? What I mean by that, it's a time or place where you want to pursue something. You ask somebody for advice. They said, Jim, right, don't do that. That's an awful idea. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. And in the end, you will see why it is that I'm right about this. So, uh, wait, so, re so repeat that. Let me essentially, let me you know, you want to pursue something, you're, mm -hmm. at, you're asking somebody for advice about some doing something, they tell you that's you know, don't do it, that that's going to be bad for you. And you're like, you know, thanks for the advice, but I'm going to do it anyway. And in the end, you'll see that I'm right about this. Yeah, I mean, if uh, I mean, if someone probably told me don't go on the challenge because you're probably going to get hurt, I'd be like, mm, no, I'd be like, well, if I do. Uh, you know, it is what it is. So if, if like, for instance, I have my, my Mustang, I put Lamborghini doors on my Mustang and people are like, Oh, don't do that. And I'm like, bro, I'm going to do shit anyway, if I want to. So, I mean, I'll take people's advice. Don't get me wrong. I mean, but I, I feel like a lot of things are, is in God's hands. And if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And that would probably, you know, I would take the advice, but I would kind of see how it goes and then make my own decisions because that's probably the best way. And then just, uh, you know, God will, will put me through the way. God's word. Yeah. It's that's like, it. uh, I told you so moment. Yeah. Like the, I gotcha moment. So that's the, the signature question that Nick asks, uh, towards the end of every podcast that we do, uh, Gina Marie, you were amazing. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I can't wait to see you in person. Last point from me. Uh, when, when we get into like spiritual astrology talk at the very, very end here. Right. So uh, I don't know if we should guess. No, I like, I think Nick and I know your sign. So uh, <laughs> you are, you are a Leo, right? Surprise. Yeah, yeah, bro. Come on now. All right. Surprise. She's got <laughs> long flowing blonde hair. That's like a lion's mane. And she loves being the center of attention and, she acts like a Leo, right? Like a like a regal lioness, right? Um, do you relate to all the characteristics? Oh of yeah, bro. Like I'm not like all into that horoscope type shit, whatever. But like the signs of like a Leo is like the sense of retention, um, kind of like not like the heart of the sleep, but like I give my heart to like everyone and do everything for anybody. And I don't mind doing that because if someone needs my help, but I'm like. Bro, how high? Like, 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 what do you need? Like, let's go. But like, if you 
like mess with me. No, no, no. And that's definitely like a Leo because I'll give my heart for anything. But once you steal me wrong, that that's that's it. But like, yeah, like the center of attention, the spotlight, that that's a Leo. That's all on me. And I'm, I'm totally a Leo, which is funny how people's personalities go with their birthday wins. But I, I really I really believe in that. And I'm totally a Leo. Everything that they say about it is is, is true. It's definitely true. Gina Marie, we appreciate your time once again. Uh, what we do here is we always give our guests the last words. So if there's anything else you would personally like to share or promote for yourself or possibly tease or, you know, if there's anything that, you know, is breaking soon that you kind of want Nick and I to have the inside scoop on, you know, you let us know. Uh, but this was a lot of fun and we thank you for doing this with us. Appreciate yeah, it. And also, this is your chance to, uh, you know, pitch Matt Klotz. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love you so bad. Um, You're not the only one who slides into his DMs, by the way. No, I didn't say I slide into his DMs. I mean, oh, like, God, so I'm the only one? No, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I love him. He's so, he's so sweet. He's so cute. He's, he's, so cute. Oh, yeah, he's got the six pack abs. Oh, yeah, be like, bro, when I need to wash my clothes and then the abs are yours. So, yeah, Matt, Matt's, Matt's a great guy. I hope all, you gotta, comes... all you have to do is just cook him a nice dinner. Exactly. I hope he comes to the premiere. I have to ask him. I have to uh, uh, text him and ask if he's coming to the premiere. I mean, I know we haven't really um, um, planned things yet, you know, so, but I'm sure things are probably in the next couple of weeks. And you guys are going to come, right? Where's the premiere? We don't know yet. Usually, it's usually kind of I have it sleep, but sometimes they change the area depending like how big it is and like oh, the date. That's if available. it's in New York, yeah. Oh no, one hundred percent, it's in New York. So you guys be my special guest, and I'll even tell them be like, bro, maybe you could set up like a podcast and you could just interview people on like the thing and stuff like that. Hundred percent. Sounds 100%. amazing. Sounds 100%. amazing. Hundred percent. You got. I, mean, you got, I, I don't I'm know if sure. I ever heard better last words, Joe, than that. Yeah, you guys he, are my guests. All, all I know is, all I know is you. Wait, you say you're not smart, but you sound really, really smart to me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, to me. Thank you. But yeah, my guests, and I'm telling you, set up whatever whatever mic or things you need to get and like interview people. You'll get probably pretty much get everybody. Like X, you, you guys know this. Like you can X like what uh it's it's a pre a pre party party prequel to you guys when you perform your podcast on stage and shit. So this is like a little uh pre interview type thing. You can ask like the people like what's their favorite uh who's their the, um out of like the cast like who do you think is gonna go far? Like people love that shit. But yeah, uh -huh. you be my personal guest. Don't worry, I'll get you in. You talk to everybody. You know, dress up, what's up? Get some drinks even I don't drink. Nicole's not. We're gonna write Jay. The whole fucking crew is coming. Challenge, Big Brother, Amazing Race, Survivor. Let's go. Everybody, let's go. It's We're gonna in. be great. I promise you. I, I right. can't. I so thank you. That sounds great, Gina Marie. This has been fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. You know, I look forward to. Hopefully you playing on my softball team. And just remember this, in softball, when you play us, you could strike first, you could strike hard, but do not strike out, okay? That's going to be a big no-no on, on the field, but we'll get you out there. No and mercy, baby, no mercy. You got the Cobra Kai up in this No deck. mercy. You're going to come out with your headband, probably, the ACL uh, wrap, and you'll be ready to go. So that's oh, going to do it here for this awesome interview, this awesome episode. If you know I'm right, for our very special guest, Gina Marie Zimmerman for my co-host Joe Calabrese. I am Nick Durst, and this has been You Know I'm Right.